Okay, so I got a comment in the one of the videos I did on, on one of the battery teardowns, basically asking about series parallel battery combinations. And what I wanted to start with is just some of the nomenclature of the things that you might see on batteries and where things might get a little confusing. The typical battery, it's funny that we actually call, we interchange battery and cell. And, and while if I were to drop this out, drop one of these in front of you and go like, what is this? You'd be like, oh, it's a battery. When really, technically speaking, it's a cell. It's a single chemical reaction encased in a thing, encased in some kind of container. And so this is typically referred to as a cell. When we take these things and put them together and put them into a pack, it's what's known as a battery of cells. So this particular battery of cells has two 18650 nickel metal hydride cells in it. So there's two cells comprising one battery. This one has four 18650s comprising 18650 cells that comprise a battery. This one that we looked at a few months back has eight cells in it comprising a battery. So cell is, I would just say we break it into, uh, so there's a cell and then there's a battery. And typically this is a single chemical unit. We'll just call it that. And just think of this, I'll just draw a little bit like double A battery and cylindrical 18, these are my awesome drawings of uh, 18650. And this is the battery, which is more than one cell configured in series parallel or a series parallel combination. Now, do I often mistakenly call a cell a battery? Of course I do, but I just wanted to delineate between the two of these for the sake of the discussion involving battery ratings and capacities. Now that we know what a cell and a battery is, let's just take this unit to start with as our example and look at the construction of this. This inside of it has eight cells, eight 18650 cells, eight of these. This has, we'll put it on the battery side, 18650, that's in 2D apparently, times eight. But they're arranged a particular way. It's not just eight of them connected together in series and they're all not connected together in parallel. It could be that you have a battery that's all of them are, are in series and all of them are in parallel. But also it incorporates this combination of those. So the simplest battery pack to start with I know I was talking about doing the PowerCore Plus first, but I'll just start with the simplest one, which is this Anchor one, which has, it just says, this is the Astro E1. And this one has the, uh, this is the updated one. So it has a capacity of 6,700 milliamp hours, or they do a slash and then they say 24.12 watt hours. And that is critical. The slash this is what's critical because if you just look at this, look at the milliamp hour rating of the battery pack, then you're missing half of the equation to get what is going on inside the battery or battery pack. I'll put pack in parentheses because it's I, I'm saying it often, and it's it's this it is a battery pack, right? So inside this cell, inside this inside this pack, is two cells. So we'll draw a little representation of the pack, battery pack. And there are two 18650 cells. One, eight, six, five, zero. One, eight, six, five, zero. These two are actually connected to each other with a plus and a minus. The reason why I know this, I haven't actually taken one of these apart, but based on the testing that I've done on these packs, I have not done a, I don't think I've done a video on this one, but these little ones, to keep the cost down and everything else, based on its efficiency, which is around 80%, even at modest, as, as I ramped through various uh, loadings, it indicates that it's using a, uh, a boost converter as opposed to a buck converter. And it's just cheaper and more efficient to, to do it this way, especially when it's only two cells 
and like if you were to get two cells or a single cell battery pack and this is a completely parallel combination so what that means is the cells positives and negatives are tied to each other they're electrically connected to one another if you were to take a voltmeter this is my virtual volt voltmeter and i were to probe on in voltage i would get at an average charge 3.7 volts dc if it was just off the charger uh, a maximum voltage of about 4.2 volts across this entire thing so that's the voltage now, if I were to go and measure just how much current flow I got out of these cells, and these cells are rated, we'll say, each cell is 3,350 milliamp hour. So if I were to just measure, I just was like, I don't care about the voltage, I just wanna know how much current is gonna come out of this in a given hour, because it's, it's current flow over a unit of time, then in one hour, I would get 3,350 milliamps, approximately. But the critical piece is not this. It's this overall watt hour. This is what's telling you the total capacity of the cell is, because it's talking about the voltage and the current to get you power. Because in DC, power equals voltage times current. So if I were to take the nominal voltage of the cell, which is about, which is agreed upon, if you look at the data sheets and that for a variety of cells, that are nickel metal hydride, nickel metal hydride. <laughs> I'm looking at nickel metal hydride cells and that's what I said. Lithium polymer cells, the nominal voltage is 3.7 volts, 4.2 volts peak. In calculations, they're always using this nominal voltage. So if I were to take 3.7 volts DC, and then I were to add the, the current capacity, because remember, they're in parallel, so Oh, I don't think I mentioned this yet. In series, the voltages add, add voltage. You don't add, you don't add the current. In parallel, you can add current. You don't add the voltage. In series, you can add voltages, and in current, or in parallel, you add the amount of current. If, if this is like, these are all, basically current sources. You're treating these all as current sources and these are all as voltage sources. So I would take the 3.7 volts nominal times 6.7 uh, amp hour. I am on the fly dividing this by a thousand to get it into amp hour, not milliamp hour, because the total power rating is in watt hour, not milliwatt hour. If you wanted it in milliwatt hour, you would just not do the division by a thousand. And so if I were to do that calculation, with my calculator. So if I were to multiply 3.7 times 6.7, then I would get 24.79. Now where they get 24.12, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the nominal voltage. It might be the nominal voltage. They might consider it 3.6 volts, 6.7. That's it, ta-da! So they consider the nominal voltage to be actually 3.6 volts and not 3.7. So I stand corrected, this is actually 3.6. And then that times 6.7 amp hour gives you 24.12, exactly what is marked on the battery pack. So now we looked at an example of one series, two parallel. Overall, we have one thing in series, one battery in there. So it's one series, two parallel uh, configuration. So let's do something more complicated. Let's do the one like that's in the anchor battery pack. So this says capacity 26,800 milliamp hour slash 96.48 watt hour. If I were to look at this the same way and I would look at the batteries in the pack, I'll draw a much larger pack this time, we would have eight cells. Why am I drawing them? Not the full length of the pack? I have no idea. They're very well padded in my design which result in a very large battery pack. So like we saw in the previous example of this little guy, the tops of these are all connected to each other across the top. And then the bottoms also are connected to each other. But then instead of all the cells being together in parallel, in between, they are connected to each other. So these are each 18650, 18650. Now, if I were to look across one row, and I were to again take my virtual voltmeter probes and stick them across 
that's the sound it makes when I do the voltmeter probes, across the connection point here, I would get the voltage across these two cells. So it would, it would give me, again, if it was fully charged, it would be 4.2 volts times two, because there's two cells. So that'd be 8.4 volts DC. And we're gonna go back with the 3.6 volts DC that Anchor's clearly referencing for the designs, which would give 7.2 volts. So nominally, I would see 7.2 volts between these two points from here and here. So this is our battery plus, and this is our battery minus. And actually there was an additional lead, I don't wanna complicate this too much, but there was an additional lead that was connected across all these points. I'll draw it in blue, because I think it was actually a blue wire. It didn't go anywhere, it wasn't tied to powering anything, but it was for balancing. And it was referenced, and this is also positive, and it was a reference to the negative voltage rail. How do we come up with the current measurement per hour and the overall power measurement? We can look at it one of two ways. The first way to calculate it is to look at the current capacity in this case, when they talk about it in milliamp hours, usually refers to the total amount of current available at a given voltage. And this is critical. This is the current capacity at 3.6 volts or whatever the nominal voltage is. So, so technically this should, they kind of, they're, they're saying that in a way by slashing this and saying, they're showing the watt hours. Because if you were just to go and divide 96.48 watt hours, just as a quick demonstration here, if I were to take 96.48 watt hours and divide it by 26.8 amp hours. Again, I wanna keep the units compatible with one another. 26.48 watt hours divided by 26.8 would give me 3.6 volts. Remember, power, equals voltage times current. So if I wanted to get the current, sorry, if I wanted to get the voltage, I would do uh, divide by I. So power over current gives me voltage. So we, so we know now, here is the voltage that this current is being measured at. So really it's 26,800 milliamp hours at 3.6 volts DC. That's how they're getting it. So when you look at the pack like this, and it's not in parallel only, where you can simply add up the current, you have to treat this as the current capacity at a particular voltage. Otherwise, it will, the, the math won't work. And what you'll end up getting is, if you go, ah, I'm not looking at this voltage, they go, okay, this is 3,350, 3,350, 3,350, 3,350 and multiply that together. So you get 3350 times four, which would give you 13,400 milliamp hours, which would be incorrect because it assumes, it assumes the pack voltage is at 3.6 volts, which it's not. We, we already said and measured in that previous video that it was at 7.2 volts or 8.4 volts peak. So the key is to always account for this voltage. With that in mind, we can tackle this one of two ways. One way is, Ignore the voltages and go, okay, every cell here is at 3.6 volts nominal. Just take the number of cells that I have, treat them as 3.6 volts, and come up with the total milliamp hour capacity. So we have 3,350 milliamp hour times eight cells that are at 3.6 volts. And again, this is, we're not, this is in brackets. We're not actually multiplying by voltage, it's just the number of cells to give us the total the total current capacity, which 3350 times eight is 26,800 milliamp hour. The other way is to, and I'm just gonna move down here to do the, because we're gonna do the power calculation afterwards. The other way is to look at it as 3,350 milliamp hour, because you're looking at it at 3.6 volts, you would say, I'm gonna take these by two and then there are four sets in parallel. It's the same, essentially the same thing. I'm just, it's the, the visualization of the math. I can look at them as individual cells and just go, there are eight cells at 3.6 volts times eight gives me that. Or I could say three, uh, 3,350 milliamp hours times two, because there are two in this series configuration times the four that are in parallel. Again, that times two 
times four gives me the same result. So we have our current, that all checks out. Now we'll look at our power. So here, I would have to keep looking at the voltage at 3.6 volts and say, okay, I know the voltage is 3.6, but I have eight cells. So I need to multiply that by eight times the total amount of capacity for each cell. So 3.6 times 8. 28.8 volts times 3, 3, 5, 0. And that gives me 96, we kept it in milliamp hours, sorry. So that'd be 96, 480 milliwatt hours or divided by 1,000, 96.48 watt hours. And that matches up there. Now this is all considering it as a single cell. So this is all considering it as one series eight parallel. This is how it would look. The actual way this is configured is two cells in series, two S, and then there are four rows of parallel cells, 4P. So if I were to calculate this out, the way I would look at it is what's the nominal cell voltage on one row? Well, it's 7.2. So 7.2 volts DC times 33, I did it again, but whatever, it's fine, that I left it in milliamp hours, 3350 milliamp hours times how many rows? Four rows, one, two, three, four, times four. And if I calculate that out, it would be 3350, oops, 3350 times four would give us 13,400 milliamp hour times 7.2. And that would result in 96, 1,480 milliwatt hours, which divided by 1,000 would give us 9,648 watt hours, which matches what Anchor says. I used to work for a company that, that did uh, wireless charging systems for drones, and I know that in that community and anybody who's looking at lithium-ion batteries, the, the number that you see most frequently is this, this current rate per hour and that the critical thing is that that milliamp hour rating is always at a particular voltage and that is the critical piece to take away from this is that it's implied by the way that it's usually said next to a slash with power so it goes hey here's the current handling here's the power do P equals V times I if you want to figure out what is going on with this pack. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.